Alright, in this part of the tutorial, we are going to model something. Um, I've chosen to model a chair because um, a chair is a pretty simple model. And usually when you take like three modeling classes in college or something, you know, it's it's one of the first things they teach you how to model. Um, either that or a mailbox or a table. A chair is pretty standard. Um, so let's get started. Let's open Firefox. And let's Google, what does a chair look like? Um, a lot of people, when they kind of start doing art and stuff, they create a lot of uh, preconceptions about what things kind of look like. And sometimes it kind of looks off because they don't have enough visual vocabulary, in a sense, uh, to really create a uh, believable looking chair. And so let's find what we could find for a chair. You can use Google, you can use Bing, you can use Yahoo, you can use Getty Images, doesn't matter. And let's think about um, what kind of chair we want to create. Or uh, look at different examples of chairs. Um, like here you've got a nice little seat. Here you have uh, a Herman Miller uh, seat, which is actually a pretty comfortable chair. I think you also, is like another one here as well. Um, you can think about a dining chair, you can think about uh, other types of fancier furniture. And it helps you like realize that whenever you're creating a prop for any type of project for any type of environment, you have to consider well, what kind of what kind of environment is it? Where is it located at? Is it is it in a dusty old mansion? Is it going to be on the patio of some swamp uh, bayou thing? Is it going to be a futuristic type of chair with uh, floating rails or wheels or something? Is it going to be uh, it's going to be this fancier type of chair. Is it going to be just a normal chair? Um, I think I've, I think let's do this one because this is pretty simplistic in its uh, structure, and it should be a pretty good tutorial for uh, the modeling introduction. Um, so I can, usually, people when they're going to start off the chair, they're going to think, "Okay, I'm going to create a box. I'm going to center this to the world." I create an edible poly. Uh, apparently, my graphics cards doesn't like when my menu stuff when I'm recording at the same time. Let's go. Whoa, it's not even edible poly yet. There we go. And I'm just going to connect edges so I can. There we go. I just have to drag this out for future convenience. So most, most people think about a chair, you know, they think, okay, a chair's gonna have something to sit on. Wow. Let's, let's use the dumb bar here. I have like a back seat. I didn't think about four different legs. Whoa. Let's extrude these. Why not? Let's have the back incline a little bit. And since the person is sitting in this direction, we need to counteract with the back legs going back. Small details that you kind of notice over time. So this is this is a decent chair. This is like maybe for kindergarten or something if the uh, if the legs are a bit shorter. Um, but we want to create uh, convey the illusion that you know this is a chair. You know, as in dining room chair. This is like a believable type of chair. This chair can actually exist. As here, it's still kind of cartoony, you know, it's very basic, whatever. So, um, I have, give me a second, I save this image onto here, so that I, I can always drag it into my other screen, because I have a dual screen uh, machine, so I can always have a visual reference of what I'm working on. Um, since this is just a, a camera shot of of a chair, I'd only 
I'd have, probably have to invent a few things, you know, maybe portions going to be a little bit off because only viewing it from one angle. It's not orthographic views where I can have like top, side, and front view, just like a, a blueprint so I can make it, re replicate this exactly as possible. Um, and I might have some design decisions along the way, but it's always good to have a bit of reference so that you have something to start off with and I can start a lot of ideas. So, that being said, let's create the base. Okay, my click menu is not liking me. There we go. And um, I don't like this green thing. I'm going to teach you guys how to add proper material. Uh, you can access the material editor in 3ds Max by hitting M. M as in material. Or you can find the, uh, whatever window that corresponds to. But I like using shortcuts because they're all in the same location for me. And you got different material slots. These correspond to different different material data you can put on. So you can put like um, chair material here. You can put a table material, next slot, next slot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You got a whole bunch of slots, kind of like a color palette, if you wish, if you're a painter. In this case, I can name this uh, chair for chair material. Actually, I'm going to name this box chair, so that whenever I'm looking at, through my list of objects in the scene by hitting H. Uh, I can have chair. So I can apply this onto the material either by dragging or by selecting whatever I want or all the objects I want selected and assign, assign to selection. Whatever fit, fits your fancy. Um, usually people they work with gray so that they don't get distracted by colors yet and I don't know, they like putting their wireframe black so just as a standard. So you can see black outlines and stuff. I guess it looks cleaner and more professional. So that being said, I can close it. Oh, and also you can increase the specular level, which is like, um, which is basically highlights. So if you got like a metallic type of chair, then you can you can do that. If it's like a more of a wet material, then you could bring down the glossiness. Or if it looks more like plastic, you got different material properties in here. Um, the material editor inside 3ds Max is an entirely different lesson of its own, but uh, for video games, I just stick to standard and blin, because blin is the most common model for uh, creating these different types of shades for creating this material. Okay, so now there are different philosophies on um, modeling. Some people prefer doing the game asset version, you know, the, the low poly version, low poly because it has lesser polygons. Uh, before doing the the higher poly version, I'm personally more of a, a fan of working on the higher poly version bef before working on the low poly version because a lot of times, you know, when I'm looking at reference and I'm working off of it, I'm able to uh, think about the structure of uh, the prop that I'm working on instead of thinking about the block out. I mean, yes, it's it's a good idea to Think about the block out first because it allows you to visualize, you know, how how this object fits within the scene, you know, what, like what kind of volume it occupies, um, what does it look like structurally for, in terms of concept design. Um, but usually, when I model, I see an object and I see, oh, it's made of four feet. It's made of a, of a place to sit on and a cushion on top. I so in that case, I am going to model into many different separate pieces so I can get that detail as accurate as possible. And afterwards, I consider the low poly version as a compromise on top of that. It's, a, it's just a different way of thinking. Um, whatever uh, method you use, whatever works, all that matters is the end result. So that being said, I am going to select this edge, ring it, and I am going to chamfer. Get a nice little round, a bit of roundness. I might actually use a turbo smooth, just because I can. Don't forget to always have fun with your artwork. I can chamfer this two segments. Like okay, this 
Gnafranus, I suppose. Select this edge, bring it around it, then loop it so it goes through these little pieces up and down. Then I'm going to chamfer it. Turbo smooth so I can still visualize it. Increase the segments. Alright, so this looks decently round enough. Right now you can see some pinching because it's actually trying to triangulate on its own. It's it's kind of conflicting with the triple smooth um, algorithm. Um, so you hear it's because you can see that this giant surface it's what we call an n-gon, which is a face which has more than four sides. Because uh, four-sided faces, every single face gets triangulated anyways. Let me see if you can actually visualize that. At, when you hit edit triangulation, you can see that every single face has triangles. Because that's how game, game engines interpret, um, interpret geometry. Apparently, in this case as well. Uh, so, when you have giant surfaces like these, it tries to triangulate on its own, and you can get some really funky results. So to control that, I am going to connect edges together. I can actually just select one one dot, select the other, and hit dot comma. Dot comma, what, what it does is that it repeats last action. It's on the right side of your keyboard, right next to L. Whenever you get pinching, a general rule of thumb is to add more geometry. Whether you're connecting uh, different points together to a different fashion, whether you're adding more edges so you can clamp down the pinching, or you can increase the tessellation so that you can have a bit less pinching. Whatever works. Um, there's no real method yet that I, think, that, I can know, that I really know of about getting right or wrong type of smoothing. So if you got really like, mess around with things and see what works or what doesn't. In this case, I got something that kind of looks like the, back seat, the bottom scene of a chair. Let's increase the width smooth. All right, looks pretty good. Um, in our chair reference, the back end is slightly tapered towards compared to the front. So I like what 3ds Max you can use a lot of modifiers. So Let's taper this. As you may have noticed, I've actually put the taper layer on, on the, under the turbo smooth and above the edible poly. Doesn't matter in this case where you actually put it. In some other cases, it does. All it's doing is just like the order of priority of stacking, I guess. So it's gonna it's gonna view this layer first. Then it's gonna taper it before, and only at the end it's gonna it's going to turbo smooth. So in the taper, let's say I want to increase or decrease. Right now it's not affecting anything because I think I have, yep, I have a selection mode selected. So it's only selecting whatever I've selected under that selection mode. Let's go back to taper. So now you're starting to see results. It's starting to taper like this or like this. I don't like this axis. There we go. Something like that not not as extreme. So the end result, not too bad. I'm gonna collapse two, so that my taper information can be collapsed into the edible poly information. I will turbo smooth on top of it. That looks about right. Now let's. Um, Let's create a chair leg. Chair legs, they're pretty much cylinders. Cylinder, 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 box. Every object you see and you want to recreate inside the 3D program, visualize them as primitives uh, so that you're able to start off with whatever primitive you want and just block plug them in. Um, some tutorials or some teachers or people with 3D model, they would rather that you model into a single mesh um, mainly 
we do that for like PlayStation One games or for iPhone games because technically a uh, single mesh is a lot cheaper than having lots of pieces of foldable geometry and uh, different elements attached to each other. Um, but the thing is that if you are trying to do this from a single mesh, you have to subdivide um, this chair more times, and you're going to have more polygons, which is which could end up uh, being a lot more expensive than just floating geometry. So for current generation games, uh, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, wh whatever are you going to use this for, um, I highly recommend to use floating geometry. It's also a lot faster and easier to manage and to model than trying to work out on the deformations of whatever uh, face you're trying to inset or extrude. So let's try using our cylinder. Let me move the grid. So right now I don't really care about how many sides are round. You know, it looks round enough to me. I'm still working on the high poly. I'm going to do a low poly afterwards. I don't need this top edge. Save polygons. Let's convert it. Let's convert to low poly. Face mode. I am going to inset slightly so that I can collapse it. Because if I'm going to turbo smooth this thing, it might do some funky things on the bottom. Oh, M for material editor. Doing this. Let's call this Lego Lego One. Because it's going to be four different legs. I can actually go to top view and visualize the placement of my legs. If you need modeling, it's very important to get used to the camera controls so that you can edit things really f quickly. Let me bring up my reference again. There we go. So as you can see, it's pretty thin compared to what we're doing right now. Top view. I think it's a it's a decent location. You can actually probably move a bit more here. Probably a little bit tall. Go left view. In this case, I'm making it intersect slightly. It's better to have it slightly be sure and slightly inwards than having it floating outwards and people noticing there's a hole there. Um, in our uh, reference, I noticed that it's kind of tapering inwards, but I'm kind of debating whether or not it's just because of uh, the lens distortion from the camera or if it's uh, because it's actually like that. Let's say that, you know, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this design. I'm going to taper it inwards. Could it look like less blocky or whatever? So let's taper it. Taper. Not bad, not bad. Maybe a little bit too much. All right, let's go back to top view. Let's clone this thing downwards. If I do it on y-axis, you'll see it kind of go offset because We've tapered this top thing before. 
So let's hit copy. Okay. I didn't do instance because um, this thing actually is a bit different. Actually, this is the idea. Maybe I'll just do this thing as a single, a single object so I can get the smooth type of curve. Let's do that. But first, I'll copy this side to the other side. I'm going to just symmetry this. I'm going to go hit 1 to go down the mirror. And since I have control of this thing, I actually see that whatever I do in here will affect the bottom coordinates. So if I right-click on Splinter 0, since I centered my chair in the middle, it's going to go the exact opposite. So I've got two front legs. That's pretty awesome. And since symmetry tool is on, anything I do here is going to go over there. Anything I do on the bottom layers is going to affect the top ones. So let's say I want to collapse this thing. You can see the end result. Let's say I want to I just sh held shift and I dragged the border up so it would extrude. Now let's see. Yeah, front view, left view would be a little bit better. There we go. That looks better. I'm just eyeballing it right now. If you're working on a specific project or game, you know, you might have a character model reference for scale. So, like I know if you have a, a biped or something. Actually, yeah, let's let's summon a biped. Um, this is more or less anatomically correct for referring to. Unless you have a very stylized type of character, you know, like a cartoony character, and you sit on objects with his little feet or something. And you can adjust chairs accordingly. All right, so we can already see this is a pretty large of a chair, or the biped is just a little bit small. Interesting. I don't use the biped as much. I think it's normally for some sort of rigging purpose. Alright. I can't exactly move the pelvis to move the entire body, but if I go here, I can see the hierarchy of what objects are linked to what. So if it's like this bottom one, biped zero one, I can move the entire mesh. I can sit, and I'm going to scale down the chair accordingly. It's a bit of a hassle to scale linked objects. Like, all right. This guy looks like a kid now. Let's find it. Let him sit again. Whoop. A little bit smaller, and I think we're good. Be a little bit too low, and let's say the chair is, is reaching like towards. You got these dots. The few. Let's say the top of the chair goes here, and the back seat ends here. However, I'm a bit more concerned about the length of the legs. 
Doesn't look very comfortable. Bring it back. A bit more. A bit more. Picture one. Whoop. Does this chair look comfortable enough? Alright, just gotta lengthen the legs now. Side view, and L for left. Just eyeball it. Alright, so I'm going to copy this coordinate. Because I wanted this other piece of the chair to go at the same level as this one. There we go. Actually, let's collapse this taper. Collapse too. And don't forget, um, like any 3D, any piece of software, it is always prone to crashing because of um, some sort of bug or whatever. Or maybe, maybe just machine just blue screened or something because of a hardware failure. So don't forget to save. Save as, uh, save as. I'm going to put this in the chair tutorial file. And I'm going to call this um, chair. Save it to different uh, files. Dot max is what I use. And also know that if, when you're saving it with in iterations, you know um, it's highly recommended. But usually I kind of forget to do that. It's it's a bad habit. You could hit on the plus sign. So it's going to save as chair zero one, chair zero two, chair zero three. Just in case your current file gets corrupted or whatever, and you can open it again. You can always go back to previous iterations. Um, it might t take a little bit more hard drive space, but it doesn't. But 3ds Max files don't take as much space as a Photoshop file because uh, these are just like points in space relative to, to each other, and it kind of pr generates all the in-betweens instead of like pixels, which you have to you have to assign information of every single uh, bit of data in between. Like so, you can see here, like this is only like 288 kilobytes. It's really small. So, top of the chair, let's cap this. Scale, hold shift, drag, and collapse. And don't forget to smooth. Where, where's my smoothing? Collapse this. There we go. Out of smooth. So I have a very basic chair right now. Let's do. Hmm. In the reference, I think that I'm not sure if it's because of the perspective or not, but it might be a bit wider on top to like better re receive the back or something. But if I do wider on top, I might have to make it wider at the bottom so that it kind of compensates this nice design thing. But while it clashes too much with the front, I might have to make the front bend as well. I might just use a bend modifier, but if you use a bend modifier, then I need to have a bit more iterations so that it can have more uh, points to bend from. So let's do that. Okay, connect. I think this should be enough. This, let's bend. Not too bad. Looks weird. Let's, I know, maybe let's not do this on the front leg. Whoa. Go edge mode. 
this was previously selected. Control backspace, so I make sure to ignore dots. Let's try it here. Edge mode. Connect. Let's do 10 just in case. Let's just like this. Connect. Maybe a little bit more. 15. Why not? This entire thing. Let's bend it. Forgot to get out of my selection mode. Let's say 10 degree angle, and we can rotate this object. Move angle snap. And we can have something slightly like this. Not too bad. Front view. Right now, the symmetry is not working as well because the symmetry plane has been rotated by this slight angle. Delete this, and do symmetry again. Some slight difference because of what we call the X form. Let's say I bend it like this. Actually, no, that X form seems to be. The X form doesn't seem to be the problem here. I'll go over X form a little bit later if we ever go through it in this tutorial. It's a pretty important concept. I think it's because my bite bed's not centered. Yeah, maybe. Is this thing centered? This thing's not. Let's move the pivot point towards the center. Why not? Maybe we just have to eyeball this one. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Might have to symmetry from here. No. Let's collapse to. Let's try resetting X form. X form, you can go to the hammer thing, reset X form, reset selected. Now what it does is that it creates these X form modifiers with new coordinates and therefore interprets this object as this is the new X form from which it's inside. I'm not sure how to explain X form, but see, without the X form, the way it's, it's perceived geometry, you know, it's this is the flat, flat bottom, this is the flat top, you know, and this is the flat side. X form resets that and and says, okay, um, this is the new flat side. This is new flat top, flat bottom, flat sides, and this is important. Um, some, sometimes the symmetry tool is not going to work as well because we're relying on the X form. Uh, sometimes when you chamfer, it's not going to um, chamfer properly because it relies on the X form. When you're going to be unwrapping, which you're going to learn afterwards, um, when you're starting to uh, relax distortion, sometimes it won't work well because of the X form. I've personally set it as a shortcut to Alt uh, Left Arrow. You can go here, um, customize user interface. Let's. It'll take a little while to load. There we go. And um, can we find this in here? X 
to xform in alphabetical order. Let me see if we can find reset. Restrict. Reset xform. When I go here, right now I can see I've signed it to alt left. So in this case, I can select this command, left arrow. Right now it's currently signed to this. I can sign it, remove it. I can reset my uh, shortcuts. But since I use it all the time for modeling, it's something I heavily rely on. Note, note that uh, when you do that, it collapses everything and goes to Edward Poly or something. So you're going to lose a lot of in-between data. And there we have it. We have um, we have this thing. It's symmetrying properly now. So I guess we really did need to reset XForm. We might not, we not even have to bend the front legs. Looks fine enough. Let's create another cylinder. Let's go back to geometry. And let's find a cylinder. Right click and poly. I can apply a default material onto this thing. Got face mode. Hold control to select multiple faces. Inset. Collapse. Might have to delete those faces anyways, but oh. My angle snap's not on. Hit A for angle snap. Or I can hit this button. I like using shortcuts. I'm gonna center this thing, because right now the pivot point is up to here. Because it, it's kinda assuming that this is the floor going up. Oh yeah, and also X form. Uh wait. And you switch to local, um, view is just like, okay, um, from, your view, from your viewpoint, where is the up, uh, up, down, left, right, and everything? Right now it cor corresponds to this. If you go local, it notice that every single object has its own sense of up, down, left, right. Before it was rotated this way, so, because this was how it was created. So this is up, down, left, right. When you rotate it, as it's different, it keeps its coordinates, you know, and it's own reference. So when you reset X form, it does this. I use my shortcut Alt uh, left arrow, and let's affect pivot point, and let's let's center it to object. Right. Right now it's local, so it's not really changing anything. It's going to, it's resetting itself. So let's bring this to view. And now, I can do this. Technically, you have to go to world. I'm not sure what the difference between world and view is. But I just I switch between them whenever I need like a different type of uh, result or selection thing. So um, in the reference, these bars are slightly thinner because they are not they aren't as important for the support as gravity is going down. It's just kind of it's just to convey the sense that it's holding these legs together. Not sure if it really does that, but it's really cool design wise. So how many were there on, on the back side? There's like one. Alright, let's put one here. Since it's thinner, you know, I could yeah, I can delete the faces around back there. Um, sometimes when you're modeling, when you have separate pieces and stuff, sometimes you want to detail a single piece and really work on it before any other thing. So you want maybe be attempted to isolate it. Some people they just select objects and they can hide, unhide, and all this stuff. Um, usually I work on one object at a time or multiple objects at a time. So I select whatever I want to work on and I'd Alt Alt Q. Alt Q allows me to get isolation mode and you get this little window that appears called isol exit isolation. So once I'm done, I can click here, and I'm back to normal. Pretty nifty. I keep, usually keep it on the other window because I don't want it to be within my workspace. 
it's gonna select here, select here, delete, exit isolation mode. There we go. So let's see where you can find it. Also in size, looks like it's a little bit lower, and look at these are at the same level, and this is even lower. So let's try doing that. It's a little bit short. There we go. Actually, let's go to front view. Make it a little bit lower. Yeah, just a tad. How far apart are these? Yeah. A lot of people like using a lot of instances. Um, I'm pretty bad at that. I just kind of copy everything I do and clone it or symmetry it. It's probably a bad habit, but I know I had some bad experiences with instancing before, especially when I'm UVing and when I look at my textures. You know, sometimes it's and sometimes it looks too repetitive or Sometimes like shadowing is it goes a bit kind of weirdly. I mean, I'm sure that there's like I, I know that people have used it perfectly fine and you know to get really good results. In my case, you know, I mean, just maybe I'm a little, bit, a little bit bitter about it. This this looks good enough. Um, wait, maybe yeah. I, th I think these all these are just thinner. So let me thin this out. Because we're eventually going to get these bigger notches, so these notches are going to add to the silhouette and kind of give uh, the, the visual illusion that it's a little bit thicker. But these middle bars here, I think they're thinner. So let's do that. Let view. enough for me. Let's symmetry this thing. Love having my modifier shortcuts. I have to use symmetry all the time. Um, so why so I can see this going that way. There we go. And this is pretty much the same distance as this one. I mean yeah we've bent it a little bit but but not by much. So let's clone it again. Just gonna do copy. Well wrong shortcut. Looks pretty thin. I think that the legs are actually a bit thicker in reference. Let's do that. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to the edible poly layers because that will be able to symmetry and keep the same position. Yeah, now these things are thicker, you know, I think these need to be thicker as well. Yeah, probably instancing was a good idea. Whoa. 
my symmetry axes are are off. Hit one to get back to this thing. There we go. There we go. This looks sturdy enough. Control S for save. Don't forget to save your stuff. Maybe that's why I don't save in iterations as much. I like using my shortcuts. Probably there is a shortcut for save as or save as iteration. I still have a lot of stuff to learn in 3ds Max. Whenever you want to learn more stuff, you know, hit F1 for help menu, and you're gonna get this thing. I was looking at normal bump a bit earlier on. But type any type of uh, search word you have, and you, you can most probably find it. Yeah, you got all this, but when you're looking at a different a specific function, like, oh, um, what can I find for rendering? Great resource. Number one frame window. And eventually you learn over time about all these different functions. Most professionals don't even know what every single function in 3ds Max does, because they can't, because they just have the same program for every single job, and they're pretty much specializing in a single thing. So let's go to front, center this. I think I have it copied again instead of instanced. Oh well, doesn't matter. I can actually add symmetry in both at the same time. And flip. Apparently it doesn't want me to add in numbers, so I have to select each one. Or not. It seems to work fine. There we go. We got a nice little bottom chair. Now for the upper levels. Three here, starting from the lower back. Another one here. Looks like it's a bit curved. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to curve it or not because it looks pretty rigid. And do these. And I think I'm going to do the pillow a little bit afterwards. Let's do that. Let's try that. Let's try here. Go left view. Let's cut a few more times. Let's go back. To the chair. Okay. Maybe it's a little bit too high. Okay, it sounds looks about right. All right, let's make the last one on top. There we go. Got wireframe. Top one needs a bit, a bit longer. Right, we got a decent chair.
I'll tweak a little bit later on. I just want to have some basic block out. It angled. Yeah, this is a good example. If I angle it and try to scale it like this, it's going to distort it because it's not scaling along its own axis. If you go local, then you'll be, you'll be just fine. I think that these middle bars are thinner. No, actually, they're just a bit more tapered than the end. Let's do that. Let's. I'm gonna rotate back a little bit back. Let's subdivide this thing. Um, let's connect it. Chamfer. Top, bottom, and I get to scale it. Might need a bit more adjustment. Yeah. There we go. Let's make it a little bit thinner. Local axis. There we go. I'm actually going to move it local. There we go. We got a nice little chair thing. Let's center it. Um, let's see how many. There's like five. I'm not sure they're all. They look angled in the picture, but it might just be perspective, because it's moving that way. I, th I think it's angled. Maybe not. I don't know. In this case, let's say it's not angled. It's our design. One, two, for the same type of spacing. And let's use symmetry to our advantage. And it's like this flip. Alright. Might be a bit too cluttered in the middle. Let's just manually adjust. Interesting. How times is it cloning this thing? Let me just do it one by one. One, and um, symmetry, flip. Let's select this one, let's select the element see the end result. I think we'd have to angle them anyways because it looks kind of weird when these areas are bent. So yeah, I guess in the picture it was uh, angled. No worries. We just rotate and it's going to rotate on the other side as well. Awesome, we got something that looks semi-decent. Now let's make that cushion. I could probably clone this thing, but I want it to be a bit softer edge, and it would probably be faster just making a new box and redoing the same process, and also having this nice little cushion lining, which I'm going to teach you about with splines. Some of you are going to love splines, some of you are going to hate splines. Um, 
Spine saved my life for cabling and all that f fun stuff. Because the spines are, if you're familiar with Illustrator or Photoshop, uh, they're basically Bezier curves in 3D space. Hope, hope that wasn't nonsense for most of you guys. So, let's move the biped guy. I'm going to hit H. Set the bip. Whoop. Now, how thick is this cushion? About the same size, maybe slightly thicker. No, I think same size, just wider. So let me add material. In this case, I'm not doing the bottom face because since I'm going to make it overlap a little bit, I kind of want to have that bottom face. If you're doing like a low poly model, then you might just delete it or you know make it overlap a little bit. Depends how you want it to compromise. Okay, let's make it look comfier. Um, wait, this thing's actually like a box box. Is it tapered or not? Hard to tell. Well, let's make it a box box. Maybe a little, a little bit less on the side. Note that when you're um, transforming within the window, it's not affecting length parameters or anything. It's just as weird on transformation. Poly. Let's triple smooth this. Doesn't look like anything. Looks like a fart cushion or something. Or a double sided weird meat pie shield. It's like top, it's like bottom. Hold control, edge, chamfer. Two segments, why not? Right now, I'm not sure if it's doing it properly. Might have to reset X form. Remove turbo smooth. You can hit the light bulb to deactivate the activated modifier. In this case, I'm deactivating because it otherwise it just collapses with the modifier on. Something to keep in mind. All right, two segments. And now it's doing a lot more evenly. So, reset X form is your best friend. So now I can dictate okay, it's going to be hard edge, like chair. I can make it softer. In this case, I'm making it softer. I can select ring loop. And I'm making it s softer. Oh, why do I have my vertex selected on? So let's connect these edges. And dot commas repeat last operation. Alt Q to isolate. And the weird pinching goes away as I do this. So now it's looking a lot more comfier. Um, you can still see a, bit, a few more angles, but increasing a bit more. Not bad, not bad. So right now it looks a lot, looks a lot, looks a lot comfier. Um, let me bring my bite pit back. Save. Not bad, not bad. His feet are slightly floating. But I'm assuming that this cushion can be pressed down. So, in my book, this is good enough. Um, let's make it a bit more convincing. Like, there's a little slight depression on the chair because people have sat in it before. Always think about where your props are, how they've been used. When you're later going to go into texturing, we're going to think about uh, which which corners and edges have been uh, more more or less scratched or indented, or where uh, where dirt and grime would be able to uh, go into. 
where dust is going to accumulate. All that fun stuff. You know, kind of every single uh, piece of detail, you know, any additional thought that you're going to put into this piece of artwork, it's going to really going to make it a lot more cohesive and you know, make it a lot more convincing. So in, anyways, in this case, I want to make this thing go down. So let me connect these edges so I can have so I can create this intersection. There we go. So I can grab this point. And depress a little bit. I might see some slight inward deformation. That's too much. Looks a lot better. I think it's too much though. Yeah, it's too much. It's going like halfway through. It's like that one point. Bring it a little bit up. Alright. This looks good enough. If you want the material editor, bring up the highlights. And you can see, you can visualize a lot better. Some people will just stop here and like, okay, this chair looks comfy enough. I'm not satisfied enough because when I see this, I see some this nice little lining. Let's add a, little, a bit more detail. Let's add the lining. I got spline. I'm. I think I'm gonna use line. Maybe rectangle. Rectangle sounds nice. I can probably edit re rectangle afterwards. Never tried a rectangle. I usually use splines. But let's see how rectangle works. Top view. Can I convert to line, maybe? Yeah, I can convert to edible spline. Nice. So I can select these points. Or my magic. As you can see, you now you, you got these things, which dictate how things are going to deform. And it works in 3D space. I, mean, I already have my move tool on and I click and drag. I can do this in 3D space. Right now, I don't want to move in 3D space. I just want to work on a single plane. It'll be a lot easier, and I might modify afterwards if needed. This crateless lining, I'm going to make the spine wrap around the edges of this cushion. And let's enable rendering viewport and stuff. Let's decrease the thickness. It's still too rough, though. So I'm going to select all my points. And I am going to con right click and convert them to. Let's see what smooth does. Smooth made it a little bit too smooth. Bezier. Let me see. All right, I think we can work something with this. Can rotate all at the same time? Yes, we can. Can we shrink all at the same time? Yes, we can. Oh, it's like here. I hit one for a lot vertex. You can also use two segments or splines. And in this case, I am going to bring this towards here. Doesn't matter if it intersects a little bit. This is just like high definition geometry. And get some nice cushion lining. Probably increase number of interpolation or like default, I can do adaptive, so it'll just create as many as it needs to. It can get pretty large, but in this case, I think it's, it's kind of worth it. 
Can we bring this to a default material? Save it. I'll do this in the bottom part of the cushion as well. Increase the size a little bit. And just select this and this. Bring it a bit up. There we go. Looks not bad. Here it's kind of floating a little bit, but it doesn't matter. This thing might be floating a little bit too much. viewport. Looks not bad. I might think about details like, oh, how is this thing holding to the back of the chair? Either you can like either you can worry about it or you could say, oh, this object is so small and significant that you need to work on all the other objects and therefore you don't really care about this. Let's say what see what the reference says. Whoa, I'm not used to your friend view, but I've been recommend this was recommended to a friend. So bear with me. As a slight little piece, let's model out. Just because. Maybe let's move this piece a little backwards. How is it attached already? Okay, so it's like a corner piece, I guess. Poly. I'm actually going to put turbo smooth on this thing. It's such a small piece. like an in-between thing. Yeah, it kind of goes at an angle. Try 45. Back side here looks good. This side, however, doesn't look as good. I think we're gonna have to cheat here. Doesn't look too bad. But let's do this on both sides. Otherwise, it looks too unbalanced. Hold control, get these points. Whoop. I think this will be good enough. I'm going to delete some hidden geometry. I don't need it. 
let's connect these dots. Whoa, a break. Connect. Yeah, I did connect. There we go. Yeah, that's turbo smooth, anyways. So I'm selecting the top, I'm selecting the bottom, with the control. I am going to chamfer. Kind of hard to visualize. The smaller piece, I think I make it slightly tighter. I am going to chamfer this as well. In this case doesn't really matter what I chamfer it to, because you don't even see the edges. Let me just connect these. So it doesn't have any weird triangulation on top. I never tried connecting dots like these. It's the first time for everything. Or you can just collapse. how this works. Works kind of fine. Let's symmetry this. Okay, right now it's not acting very well because the X form is different. So let me move Turbo Smooth and let me reset X form, Alt, left arrow, um, Turbo Smooth again. And under here, I can do symmetry. Now it's acting properly. Flip. Okay, just notice that it's kind of floating here. That's not good. There we go, fixed. I think it had like a connector piece lining at the bottom as well. Yeah, some slightness. Let's do that. And just float another box. And after this, I think we're going to do some of that detailing around the legs and stuff. I need this top face. Let's make it smaller. Whoa. There we go. Top view. This looks fine. Why did, yeah, I'll just delete the back face here. Because it's being inside the leg, so nobody can see it. Then I'm going to select this edge and shift it up. Select the other edge, shift it down. Not too shabby. I can select these two edges. I'm not going to bother turbo smoothing this time. Nope, just in case. Nah, nothing happened. It's two edges. I'm going to chamfer. Make sure that 
My faces are auto smoothed. But not. Hmm. Maybe I should lower the entire thing. Let's try doing that. Let's try bring all these points forward and up. Let's have a little bit more of a support role. Not too bad. I'd still rather have the chair itself, you know, kind of stick a bit more forward. Have these things go back in. Nope. Whoop. Try to take these bottom ones. Let's actually go to Edible Poly and attach this one. What we'll do is that it'll attach this geometry to that one and apply all the same modifiers to every single one. Okay, it's not doing it as well as expected. So I'm just going to just symmetry it on itself. and flip there we go I'm not going to start um, mulling screws and whatever but let's say let's think about stuff like okay the the bottom of uh, the chair's feet those are going to slide on the floor all the time so it's going to be smoother so therefore Use them here. It's like this edge, I'm gonna loop it. And I'm gonna chamfer it. Looks about right. Auto smooth. Same for the back leg. Let's diminish this. I almost forgot, since this thing was backing, folding backwards, we need to make this thing kind of bend the other way around. Let's collapse this. Edible poly. I select the bottom. And I'm going to do some soft selection. That's a little bit weird. Increase the fall off. More. Less. More. Let's remove soft selection. Kind of eyeball it. Okay, still keep it kind of smooth. I 
to have that. Let's try to do it properly. Not getting the results that I want. Let's just use a bend. This time we're going to limit the bend. So, it has bending towards the middle. Let's change direction. Let's try 90 degrees, minus 90. Angle, of course, is too extreme. But if we can limit the effect, upper limit, let's bring it. Lower limit. See what's wrong. Center. Oh, that's why. It's centering from there. So let me try to reset X form. Resymmetry again. From here, let's bend. Okay, it's still putting the center down there. But if I bring the center up, a gizmo, the center, I bring it up. Ah. There we go. Let's try minus 90 angle. Um, it's your angle. Sorry. Minus 90 direction. There we go. Limit the effect. The upper limit does not get affected as much. Lower limit does. There we go. It's going to bend back. Therefore, it can't compensate when people are lying down that way. Not too much, just slight. Hmm. I'm wondering, are there too many subdivisions here? Because otherwise, it's making the bend look very smooth and organic. So let me just select a few. Loop around, control backspace. Now it looks a lot sturdier. Oh, I need to get it out of this. There we go. Maybe move a little more. Whoa, that was interesting. Oh, because it's bending whatever I'm selecting. Maybe this might get some better results now. to delete this one and I think we're good. Alright, 
So we've got a chair. Now let's do some fun detailing with this. So I think I'm going to round up the top and yeah, add some little nubs. I'm just going to collapse spend. I'm not happy with it. Loop. Chamfer. Smoothing. All right. Now let's do the things on top. Those things. They're like squashed spheres or something. Let's do it this side. So after you can attach in with just symmetry over there. Okay, so how does this run thing attach to the other side? Okay, so it smooths out. So I gotta delete the bottom face and make it connect somehow. Interesting, I have a lot a lot of polygons. Let me redo the sphere. Even though I'm doing a high detail thing, you know, I'm still concerned about poly count. Because the more you optimize, even though you're doing like high detail stuff, the more you optimize, um, the more room you can have to be able to, to add more different types of detail and whatever. I mean, I've seen some 12 gigabyte machines that could handle like over easily over 10 million polygons. My machine it can only probably starts lagging at a million, so I'm not going to push it. Doesn't look too bad. It's gonna be very hard edge between there and there. Should I make it smoother? Let's try that. It's like the bottom. I'm gonna grow it, and I'm gonna delete it. Then here I'm going to shift drag, get new faces, select. Connect and let me see. Loop. Or I could just self select. Not too bad. Here, let's loop. Let's move this.
Interesting, why is it doing this? That's weird. Ah, whatever. Okay, well, it's just the last operation. This is good enough for me. select edible poly and let's attach this thing there we go so we got top things for a chair let's set our little guy back again get an idea of what it looks like looks kinda comfortable not bad not bad Now let's do some of that detailing on the, around it. So they're like what? Cylinders? Cover to edible poly. Whoa, no. Thanks. We are going to inset and collapse. You can shrink this down and float it around. Some people be, would rather, you know, subdivide this thing and we control how smooth it's going to go in and out. In this case, you know, I'm saying, ah, oh, whatever, I don't, I don't care. It's really up to you. Get what results you want. One, two, three, four. A notch in between each. Let's try to smooth this thing we get something around like this. Turn this again. Not bad, not bad. Let's make this thing connect. Sure. All right. I think we got a little ring here. So this second ring, let's be able to really smooth. Set from here. We can uh, attach top one, and therefore they're both smooths. view. I just realized that I forgot to keep naming my stuff. Um, we'll figure something out later. Oh, and these things have been detached because I've bent these. This thing needs to be recentered.
Let me see how many times I can clone this. I bought this. Oh. Oh. Be smaller for it bottom. This looks good enough for me. I'm just gonna copy. I could symmetry. I don't care at this point. It's the exact same thing on the other side. Now you only got three at the bottom and a whole bunch at the top. Yeah, this looks good enough. I'm just doing approximately. I slightly bent outwards, so we're gonna displace it. The reason why I'm not doing it as precisely as possible is because I realize that a lot of the objects in the real world they're not perfect either um, manufacturing uh, problems or whatever so in the end you know trying to get it mathematically possible you know it doesn't really help in my opinion a lot of people m may disagree with that that's my stance okay there's like four across Four, four. This is good distance. Why not? These look like little macarons. That's funny. <laughs> we 
can shift and rotate, create clones. So just shift dragging, just to shift scale. drag I need one of them one row Why why just like shift some rows left and right just for fun? Because default to manufacturing, maybe not. There's not much detail on putting this thing. Let's see what their solution was. Oh, they just put one on each. Interesting. So wait, they actually have five? I guess so. Let's start from the top then. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Doesn't matter if it intersects in this case. Pick and choose your battles. down shift drag Dragon. Shift drag. Okay, our chair is looking not too bad. All we need is these vertical ones. So how many are we saying? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so six with one on top. Let's do that. Then I rescaled it. 
just fine. Remove the ankle snap. There we go. go. Another one. Almost done with this side. This looks a bit wonky. Too wonky. A little bit better. Side view. There we go. Everything a little bit more perpendicular. Not bad, not bad. In this case, I think I'll do symmetry. I see. I'm gonna reset X form for all these. Awesome. One. Why is it edible mesh? That's not right. I'll worry about that later. I used edible mesh because I had modifiers on it and therefore it collapsed edible mesh by default. But this is not modeling on it again. 
doesn't matter. Alright, almost complete. Just need to make those small ones work. Modifier. I'm going to add a little poly. I'm going to scale it down. Front view. A bit more balance. So how many are we, are we going to say? Three? Three is a good number. One, two, three. I think they're still a bit too large. All right, this will do. Okay, looking good. I was done with my high poly geometry modeling. Now let's um, mirror this, I guess. Or not. Now screw it. There we go. There you have it. High poly asset. Then we have this biped guy. We don't need him anymore. So next we'll be doing um, low poly modeling. Low poly modeling, unwrapping, projecting all this detail onto a low poly game model, and some texturing.